for just a few minutes, are you willing to imagine that you are drowning? If you're willing, I promise to throw you a lifeline and give you some tools and strategies that you can use for the rest of your life and have forever and ever. So join me and imagine that you are in a crisis right now. A crisis is described and defined as extreme difficulty and danger. It's a time when decisions are made with duress and emotional pressure. You might imagine the death of a loved one, violence, injustice, serious illness and a bad diagnosis. You might imagine natural disaster, divorce, burnout. Imagine the compounding effects of emotional trauma and psychological trauma. Flashbacks, intrusive thoughts. They repeat again and again in your mind. You relive these terrible events over and over, re-experiencing difficult times. You might suffer changes in your memory, an inability to concentrate, nightmares, anxiety, even prolonged depression. Do you have what it takes to handle a personal crisis? Do you have what it takes to support a loved one who's in crisis today? For me, in the span of two years, I went through an unwanted move to a foreign country, a violent divorce, financial and emotional abuse, two custody battles, and the death of my father. One skill above all others helped me to survive and saved my life. One skill helped pull me up and out of crisis, <laughs> and that's what I'm going to talk about with you today. It's the ability to strategically team. You see, I'm a rower. I was a university athlete and later a coach at Columbia University in the heart of New York City. Collegiate rowing involves nine people in a boat and precision teamwork. Communication, trust, timing, they're honed over hundreds of hours of training and working together as a unit to prepare for a six-minute race. Each two-kilometer race is a perfect blend of sprint and endurance racing. Within the first minute of the anaerobic start, stroke rates are reaching 44 strokes a minute. Legs are driving down together as a unit, all to lift 1,200 pounds of pressure up and out of the water to further your boat towards the finish line. In rowing, being the best requires that you have this burning desire that fuels you through pain and allows you to reach well beyond all perceived boundaries not only for your goals, but for your boat and for your team. In facing my own personal crisis and in helping others through theirs, I've been able to marry principles from rowing and recruitment to help build powerful and life-saving teams that not only help you grow more close together as a team, but to help you connect to your values, goals, and to help the champion survive the crisis. You see, crisis can shatter a life. It can destroy your sense of being, your sense of self, your place, your identity. We are not built to go through crisis alone. The National Center for Biotechnology Information advances science and health by providing for, among other things, images on post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. These images can show that crisis produces stress that causes physical and chemical changes in our brain, including entire brain systems and functioning in the hippocampus, the amygdala, and the medial prefrontal cortex. Stress actually shrinks our brain, as shown above, by up to about 12% if trauma and crisis are left unmitigated. It affects our mood, our ability to learn, and our fear response systems. But here's the good news. 
all of these changes in the brain are reversible. Health can be restored, stress can be lessened, all with meaningful connection with others. We've learned from studies on longevity that from centenarians, those who get to live to be 100 years of age, that it's not their attitude, habits, or where they live. It's whether or not they have one to three other people who will show up for them when they need it most. Their team. <laughs> it's your community that literally helps you live longer. The question is not if, but when you will experience a personal crisis in your life. We know that worldwide, divorce is at a rate of about 50%. Each of us in the Western world can expect a cancer diagnosis, about 40% of us in the Western world, at some point in our lives. Even climate change is taking its toll. The New York Times reported in August of this year that extreme weather displaced a record 7 million new people just in the first half of 2019 alone. Learning to build a team around yourself that is tailor-made to your needs and your crisis will help you come through crisis faster with less damage to your life and your brain than if you try to bear the burden alone. So, how can the analogy of rowing help? And how can it help us mitigate crisis or, or build a personal team? You see, in rowing, we appreciate our team. None of us can row the boat alone. Each of us is given only one oar. <laughs> and if you try to row the boat alone, you'll end up in the water, overburdened, or broken. In rowing, teaming is the sport. We can't imagine tackling a season without coaches, sports trainers, nutritionists, therapists, our parents, our partners, our mentors. Everyone has a role. So why, when facing a personal trauma or crisis, would we ever do it without a team? Why do we imagine that we can? I think some of us think that we're being courageous or that we're sparing others our trouble. But when we go it alone, the risk is huge. We get bruised. We make poor decisions. We don't see the danger. We get fatigued. And all of the post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms come on. Anxiety, stress, undue trauma, sleep deprivation, and more all of which can be mitigated if you get a team. Strategically teaming responsibly returns you to yourself, to your life, and your loved ones. So how do we go about strategically teaming through crisis? Well, let's take a look at the boat and a normal recruitment process. Who's in the boat with you when you row? Only the most trustworthy people can earn a seat in your boat. These are people who will show up for you, they know why they're there, and they want to be there, and they want to be there for you. First, you've got your coxswain. She's the onboard coach and top strategist. She knows who's on your team and who isn't. She sees what's ahead, and she makes strategic calls during the crisis. She helps with decision-making and helping to navigate all the repercussions of your action or inaction during the crisis. She's got your goals on her mind and she reminds you of your best self, even when you're feeling at your worst. Next, you've got the stern pair. They set the cadence and the rhythm of the boat. They help make sure that everyone is motivated to drive together in unison, and they work together closely with the coxswain to establish leadership in the boat. The whole team follows their lead. And stroke by stroke, with precision and calm and resolve, everybody takes the necessary action to win. In the engine room, we've got power, trust, and relentless determination. Those are the people you can count on no matter what, who will always be there for you. They 
never give up. And they won't let you give up either. When you think you've got nothing left, they will literally pick you up and carry you through. They remind you that you matter and they will never leave you behind. The bow pair, they're very technical. They fine tune the point of the boat before the race even begins. They make sure the boat sets off on a straight course. They might be medical, legal. They provide the balance and the expertise needed in order to help you manage and use information to make sure that your boat has the best chance of coming across that finish line first. On my strategic team, in my own crisis, I had people who'd known me for years, but I also had recent arrivals. <clears throat> I involved immediate family. I had a group of friends that were formed by common purpose and shared commitment. Each person assumed a seat in the boat. And just like in rowing, no one could have survived the challenge without one another. We all were appreciated for our skills and we all needed one another. We all got a team, not just me. Having a team saved each of my team members from exhaustion, burnout, and secondary trauma. We used groups and platforms to share communications, to connect, to speed decision-making, and to encourage and inform one another. Everyone was appreciated for the skills that they brought. So how can you recruit a team and build a team when you're facing personal crisis? Well, many of you have already started. <laughs> Take a minute to value the people who show up for you in your life. Use the analogy of sports to lift yourself out of isolation or to help someone you care about to form a team. Offer your talents to support a loved one in crisis. A rower doesn't feel guilty for receiving coaching or from using the power of others in her boat to achieve her goals. Teaming is part and parcel of the sport, and it is my hope that we'll all begin to use that philosophy in our own lives when facing personal crisis so that we can get out of crisis faster. So here's the strategic part. We have got to be willing to look at the crisis. You've got to name the crisis if you're in one. Name it. The faster that you name the crisis, the faster you realize oh, you need a team. Have the humility to do a personal inventory and assess your own needs. Realize that needs are an opportunity to get those needs met. You can recruit someone who loves to fulfill those needs and wants to do it for you. It's important also to take a closer look at those you think are in your inner circle. Many times, some of our closest people do not have the availability, the qualifications, or the motivation to be there for you, with and for you, through a specific crisis. Even if they've been there for you before, even if you have been there for them. We can learn, like in rowing, to invite participation. See who shows up for practice, so to speak. Who is willing to put in the time to build trust and connection and commitment with you? In my experience, we need a minimum benchmark as a starting point to know whether or not this is someone that you can count on to help see you through a really difficult time in your life. So who do you choose? How do you start? Start with someone who treats you with kindness. <laughs> someone who will be able to ask you questions about your particular set of circumstances. Someone who's able to care. They may offer to help. <laughs> Look for empathy, curiosity, and good solution finding. You're going to need it. Look for early wins together 
where you can start to celebrate teaming so that you can build that good vibe and enjoy teaming together through crisis. Perhaps you're offering support to someone today, someone that you care about. That's so good. What a great opportunity for you to test your skills, grow your awareness, and learn the rhythm of crisis and how to name it and how to team with others. Asking for help to win is not selfish. It's strategic. It is responsible. Strategic teaming brings skills and energy that not only serves you, but it fuels my rower's heart. It fuels me because it's so efficient. Your team can provide witness to you, help you better manage information, and make decision-making improved. Building a personal team for your crisis can help you best make use of doctors, lawyers, and other hired experts that you may need to see you through that crisis at a time when life can feel so overwhelming. Crisis is a part of life. Each of us has the responsibility to ask for help. Building a team protects you, your reputation, and your resources. In life, we can be conscious of roles and needs, both explicit and emergent. You can practice asking for help today and building meaningful connection with others through service. You can offer your gifts, your skills, and your talents to pay attention to someone that you care about who is facing crisis right now. Learn to accept help when it is pro-offered. Rely on your team. It'll help them thrive, and it'll help you to build trust again. We don't have to go through crisis alone. Don't let yourself or someone that you care for drown. Throw them a lifeline. Help, connect, and strategically team. Begin today. Thank you.